Great. So our presenters for today are April DiPietro from the Camden County Partnership for Children and Audrey Mariani from the Camden FSO. And they will be presenting the topic, New Jersey Department of Children and Families, the Children's System of Care Eligibility and Functional Services Offered. Take it away, ladies. All right. Let's put this in presentation mode. Can everybody see this? Lisa, you're the only one I can see. All right. Okay. So as Lisa said, Audrey and I are going to be presenting on New Jersey's Children's System of Care. It's come up a couple times today in previous workshops. Uh, so let's jump in it. All these things on my screen. Okay. Uh, children's System of Care objectives are to help youth succeed to stay safe, healthy, and connected in their communities. This little diagram just helps folks to understand where everything kind of falls into place. So DCF is Division of Children and Families. Then you have DCPMP, Division of Child Protection and Permanency. And then the good old famous acronym CSOC, which stands for Children's System of Care. Underneath or alongside of CSOC is Perform Care. Perform Care is the contracted system administrator for all things under CSOC. Um, Perform Care is the single point of access for all services in the state of New Jersey. Uh, the phone number that we will be posting and blasting in the chat box uh, is 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365. Perform Care will answer the phone to help families navigate a crisis situation and get the ball rolling for services that are covered under the state of New Jersey. Underneath of Perform Care, you have the CMOs, which stands for the Care Management Organization. You also have Mobile Response Stabilization Services, and then, of course, the Family Support Organizations across the state. Each county in the state of New Jersey has a CMO, a Mobile Response, and an FSO. If you will, we're like the trifecta. You get one, you usually get all three. We work together as a nice, close team. Okay, so breaking down this uh, this information. So like I said, it's New Jersey Department of Children and Families, DCF. Under that is Children's System of Care, CSOC, and then a Perform Care, which you can call 24-7, 365. Perform Care is who dispatches mobile response and stabilization services and or connects the youth and family through their local care management organization, office if and when clinically appropriate. When the call is made to perform care, they are essentially triaging that call. They're determining whether or not the youth or young adult is in active crisis. If that is the case, they will dispatch that county's children's mobile response to go out and meet with the family within you know, an hour or so to help de-escalate. The goal here is to make sure that the youth and the family do not have to go to the crisis center. We're trying to, you know, keep as many kids out of the crisis center as possible. So mobile response is designed to help de-escalate an active crisis. Now, if a family calls and they have concerns or challenges about their child and it's not an active crisis, meaning the child is safe, they're not harming themselves or someone else, the family will have an option of selecting an agency where a licensed clinician will come to the home and complete a biopsychosocial. It's an evaluation to see what the clinical diagnosis, if any, for the young person. Everything is based on clinical need and perform care reviews all of the referrals. So CMO or FSO or mobile response do not make any of the final decisions. Everything that we do gets documented and is reviewed at the state level. So this is a little video, and let me see if I can get this to play. Lord, give me strength. Can you guys hear it? Let's do this. All right. I think I have to stop share. Let me share screen again. Hit all my doodaddies. Bear with me, guys. I'm sorry. All right. No, go back. Technical difficulties.
Mm -hmm. I'm having technical difficulties. I don't think I can get it to play. Uh, Lisa, can you do me a favor? If you go to the Perform Care website, can you drop the hyperlink in the chat? Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate it. On the Perform Care website, there are actually two videos. There's one for the general population, just to better understand New Jersey's Children's System of Care, CMO services, and how to call and access those services. But there is also, under the Parent and Caregiver tab, a special video that was created specifically for our IDD youth and families. So if you haven't already, please click the link that Lisa provided in the chat and save that and check it out after today's workshop. If you have any questions, you can always just let us know. Let me go back to share screen. I don't know why I can't see anybody. Why can't I see everybody? This is it. Can somebody come off a of mute and let me know if you can see the screen and hear me? Because now I can't see anybody in the room. It's very awkward. We could see. I can see a screen and hear you. Oh, fantastic. Thank you so much. So I am going to be presenting to myself because I can't see anybody and that's very weird for me, but let's do this. Okay, so how to access New Jersey's children's system of care. The parent or legal guardian calls Perform Care directly when seeking services for a youth up to the age of 21. Perform Care is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365. Like I said earlier, Perform Care will triage the initial call and determine the next steps. This is the number that you definitely want to write down if you don't already have it. No matter where the family lives in the state of New Jersey, this is the phone number they will call. It's the single point of access to Perform Care in order to get services started. So when to call Perform Care? Um, if the youth is struggling, if you're struggling to meet the needs of a child or adolescent who has a developmental disability, if the child is refusing to attend school or has repeated latenesses or absences, or if you have other concerns about his or her school performance, if the child shows physical and or verbal aggression, bullies other or is being bullied themselves, if you observe any family conflict, including youth substance use or refusal to comply with rules, if your child has experienced a major loss or change such as death, divorce, or relocation and does not seem to be adjusting well, if the child experiences a traumatic event such as a house fire or witnessing violence, a friend, teacher, or other trusted adults has expressed concern about the child, you would like to know more about the types of services that are available. So essentially, just call Perform Care. When in doubt, call Perform Care. Um, for our IDD families, you want to reach out to Perform Care, even if you already know that the, your child, let's say, has um, is on the autism spectrum, or if they're um, struggling with another developmental disability, because there is a lot more than um, the particular IDD resources that are available. And a lot of our IDD youth and families are dealing with more than just the disability itself. There could be some behavioral and mental health challenges as well. So you wanna make sure that you reach out to Perform Care and when you're explaining the situation of your particular child that you're being uh, detailed in what your family is is struggling or challenged or having challenges with, because it's important that we get the ball moving, not just on the IDD aspect, but also the mental health piece that we can, you know, really start, start moving quite quickly to help address. So here is the breakdown of the three main uh, areas that I previously spoke about. So there's the mobile response, the hey, care management. Yes. Can you just, there's a gray box on the top. I think we had troubleshooted that last time maybe okay. you're or, um is that better no it's still okay. there so it's, it's still there i'm moving it but i don't i don't know where to put it now it's at the bottom okay now it's at the bottom okay when i get down there because there's phone numbers i'll just move it back up to the top Perfect. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Okay. So, so there's the mobile response, the care management organization, and the FSO. So I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about each of these separate departments. Um, so mobile response and stabilization services are designed to de-escalate crisis assessment and intervention 
They do treatment planning and family safety planning. They're a type of care management. They help access, they help grant families access to community resources such as food banks, support groups. They can give a referral for follow up services. And then to access mobile response, you call Perform Care at that 877 number that we spoke about before. Like I said, mobile response's main role is to help make sure that we're keeping as many youth and families out of the crisis center as possible. So if a family is actively experiencing a crisis, the youth is harming themselves or others, you want to call Perform Care because Perform Care is who dispatches your county's mobile response so someone can come out and help to de-escalate that current situation. Mobile will work with the family for what we call the eight-week stabilization period. During that time, they're assessing if this is a isolated situation or a deeper rooted challenge. Uh, mobile's care management team will put in notes into the system so Perform Care can review and oftentimes they will pass the baton to the care management organization within that county. As I said earlier, there's a CMO agency for each county across the state. All of our services are voluntary at the CMO and at no cost to the family. The CMO provides care management services for the youth and families with complex needs. And to access CMO, you would call Perform Care. Again, when Perform Care is called for the first time, the person who answers the phone is doing a triage and they're assessing if they need to dispatch mobile response for an active crisis for safety reasons or if the family is stable enough to wait to have an in, a therapist come out to the home to you know, do a full biopsychosocial with the youth and then perform care will determine if the family and young person meets the clinical criteria for CMO services. Once that happens, the CMO will go out and work with the family. In addition to the CMO, there is the FSO, the Family Support Organization. Audrey later on will give you way more detail about the amazing work that their agency does. However, I want to point out that you do not have to have CMO services in order to access most of what the FSO has to offer. They are a community-based free resource within every county across the state. I'll say that again. They're a community-based free resource that anyone can access and utilize across the state. Uh, they're family-run and county-based. They provide direct family-to-family -family peer support, education, advocacy, and other services to family members of youth within the CMO and, of course, those who are not. Parents of youth enrolled in CMO are automatically linked with an FSO for peer-to-peer -peer support, all of those services are voluntary and at no cost to the family. And then I'll move my little box thing here so you guys can see that website. Um, there's a full list of all of the FSOs across the state on the Perform Care website. And then the two main numbers to call for CMO and mobile would be Perform Care at the 877-652-7624. I don't know what number slide we're at, so I guess I'll do this one. Okay, so Family Success Centers. So in addition to our amazing FSO resources across the state, there are several Family Success Centers. They are free, one-stop shops that provide wraparound resources and supports for families before they find themselves in crisis. They offer primary child abuse prevention services to families and bring together concerns. Uh, from the community residents, leaders, and agencies to help address the problems that threaten the safety and the stability of families in the community. A complete list and link to the family success centers across the state can be found on the DCF website. Really, really great resource. And in, I know in Camden County, we have four. So I think some of the larger counties will have more than one family success center to make sure that they're accessible to all residents. April, did you want to attack some questions? Yeah, let me uh, stop share right here because I can't see anything, which is really awkward. And yeah, let's, let's do you want to read some of okay, Sure. Yeah. Um, one I have is what does perform care do if the child has repeated latenesses or absences? Oh, that's a good question. Um, well, we would help. Me the, jump in? Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, you can go ahead. 
Yeah. I was going to say, I mean, that's, they would come to us. <laughs> they, they would usually, <laughs> usually CMO would put um, services in and then they would come to the family support organization who would help the parents learn and understand the New Jersey Administrative Code, um, what can be done to help that student if they're struggling. Maybe there's an underlying learning disability. Maybe there's some bullying or some school anxiety, some social anxiety. So we, as a family CMO would definitely set up a provider, get the, the family set up with really good supports and services. The family support piece would help the parents learn how to navigate anything school related. So if it's a kid, let's just say it's a kid who's never had school avoidance, doesn't have an IEP or a 504, we would help the parent get connected to the child study team, get connected to the social worker or the guidance counselor at school, and just kind of help that parent understand their rights and their youth's rights as they navigate whatever the issue is causing the school avoidance. Um, a lot of times um, we would go to meetings with parents, we would help, we have workshops, a lot of workshops that show basic education rights, how to navigate different things. Um, so our job really is basically to teach parents in a situation like that to navigate the system should it come up again at any other point in time, but to make sure that that parent and that youth get optimal services and supports to make the youth successful. Again, like I said, underlying learning disability, which would be a child study team evaluation, a 504 for bullying or anxiety, whatever the cause would be, we would help the parents attack and disseminate. Um, Cindy Weber, thank you. Youth partnership can also be a valuable resource. Exactly. School avoidance is, youth partnership is a great, great um thing. Every FSO has a youth partnership, which is peer-to-peer -peer support for youth 13 to 21 with any kind of anything. Um, it's a good chance for kids. Like I have a son who doesn't go to school. He's too sick to attend school. So he doesn't know how to make friends, you know, so he had a hard time at school because he was sick. Youth partnership was great for him because he learned how to talk around kids, to get comfortable around kids, baby stepped him in and it made it so much easier for him. So anything basically that a parent would need on our end, CMO would set up the services and providers. We would set up the support for the parents to learn how to navigate anything school related um, and help make sure that child got the services best suited for them. Not always what the school says. That's not always the best answer, but what the parents and child felt was best. Sorry, April. No, that's great. I just wanted to uh, shed some light that I think that sometimes um individuals in in our state get confused when to call perform care necessarily what to say right so with this school refusal piece i mean not every parent would know to think that well maybe there's you know a mental health underlier there so calling perform care and that initial triage is so critical because what you really want to dig deep in and find and highlight is what are the unwanted behaviors, right? Like, okay, yes, the child is not attending school, but what else is going on? Are they angry? Are they isolating themselves? Is this a child that used to be bubbly and outgoing and now has just, you know, locked themselves in their bedroom, let's say. A crisis is individualized, right? Like a crisis for my family might look completely different than a crisis for Lisa Delp's family. So one of the things that we always try to do when we do presentations like this is debunk any myths and really encourage folks to, when in doubt, reach out, call Perform Care, explain the situation, and see what they have to say, see what they have to offer. Because like Audrey said, if we can, you know, meet the clinical need and that youth and family open up to the CMO, we do have a lot of community partners that we can pull on that can really help that family to thrive. Um, so I hope that that answered that question. Lisa, what else you got for us? Um, I just uh, had someone ask um, if we everyone would be getting a copy of the presentation. Yes, it will be dropped in the chat box for you. And then as long as you sign in using the unique link that was provided to you, uh, will we send out the um, CEUs to everyone from the conference? You'll get whatever handouts each of those presenters provided as well. April, I'm in the process of transferring it to a PDF file for you right now to put it. Excellent. The Thank you so much. Are there any other questions, Lisa? That is it for right now. All right. We're going to circle back. Let me see if I can find my spot. All right. Let's do this. Okay. Where were we? I think we're on slide nine. Slide Family nine. success centers. There it is. Yes. All right. Can everybody see this? Yeah, hopefully. Because I can't see anybody else. Yes, ma'am. Yes. All right. Yes, fantastic. Thanks, guys. What a team. All right. So mobile response and stabilization services, um, they can conduct assessments for crisis intervention. A key piece to this is that that can be at home, 
at school, at a doctor's office, a police station, really anywhere in the community. And I, I don't know that everybody knows that. Um, oftentimes when mobile is uh, dispatched, they do end up going to the home, but just so everybody knows, it can be at the home, at the school, or anywhere else in the community. Depending on the level of need, there is that 72-hour stabilization services or the eight weeks that I spoke about earlier. If needs are significant and or the youth is IDD, intellectually developmentally disabled, mobile response may recommend CMO services to perform care. Perform care makes all determinations regarding CMO services. So that's really important to make sure that we continue to highlight that. My good old agency, so the care management organization, the CMOs across the state. Um, I'm lucky enough to work at the Camden CMO. Very proud of that. Uh, so the CMO works with youth who have and need for a higher level of care and intensive planning. Like mobile response, CMOs aim to have youth and families transition to community-based sustainable resources. The key word in that sentence is sustainable. Care management is not limited by a time constraint. So earlier on, there was conversation around um, 60 to 90 days. Some of the families that were on calls earlier felt like perform care was trying to like speed up the transition. And with our IDD youth and families, that can be very challenging and a unique situation because there is limited resource within the community to meet the needs of our IDD youth and families. So I just wanna clarify a little bit about what that 60 to 90 day is. So as Audrey mentioned earlier, if and when Perform Care deems it clinically appropriate for CMO to open, we work with the family to identify what the needs are, help them create an individualized service plan, we complete a crisis plan. And then as a child family team, we discuss what do we think would help the youth and family reach some of their identified goals? Not my goals, but the family's goals. Oftentimes that results in us asking for perform care to approve in-home therapeutic interventions with an in-home therapist, maybe a behavioral assistant or a mentor, et cetera. When those services get put into place, the way that the authorizations work for billing purposes to Medicaid is on a 90 day period. So if we start services in January, by March, the care manager will be coming back out to review that plan, to resubmit to perform care, to say, hey, this, this was the original plan. This is what we identified. This is what was put into place. This is what's working. This is what's not working. These are goals that we're still working on. Can we reauthorize these services? So that happens every 60 to 90 days. It's for the Medicaid billing piece and, of course, for us to help with the treatment planning to make sure that the whole child family team is on the same page and that we're really using the full wraparound services. Um, so hopefully that sheds a little bit more light on that feel around 60 to 90 days of, oh, like, are the services going to end? Like I said earlier, Perform Care makes the deciding factor for all of these types of services. So that's why the documentation is so important. Keeping up with the appointments with your care manager um, is, is just critical to the work that we do. So we document everything and we're essentially trying to paint the picture to perform care. This is where we were. This is what we're working on. And this is where we would like to be. And then it's just a, an open communication to kind of get us there. The child family team meetings are held regularly and result in the youth and family developing, like I said, the plan with input from the entire team. Care managers regularly contact um, are in, and are involved with the child family team for um, coordination and tracking of the progresses and the plan. And the youth can be re-enrolled up to their 21st birthday. So let me let me elaborate on that a little bit. I've been working at the CMO for over 10 years, and sometimes we'll work with a kiddo when they're five or six, and then they have a successful transition to the community, and then they come back six or seven years later. A youth and family can call Perform Care to access services as many times as needed up to the child's 21st birthday. It is not a one and done like, oh, you already tapped into CMO services, sorry for you. No, we are here to help as many times as needed up to the age of 21. The idea and our goal is to help families link with natural community-based sustainable resources. So when another crisis comes up, they have more tools in their toolbox to help them combat that. 
However, sometimes we need different services and different help. Perform care is here as many times as a family needs. So I hope that, you know, shed some light on that as well. And I believe we're on slide 12. So I'm going to pass it over to Audrey. Actually, let me... Should we do some questions? Okay. Yeah, let's do some questions. Okay. So I'm going to go to this one first before I go to the next one. Um, do you need to be Medicaid eligible for this or can pay with employer insurance? Great question. So regardless of the family's uh, financial background, whether they have or don't have insurance, doesn't matter. If and when a family calls Perform Care and we go through the motions and Perform Care deems the child clinically appropriate for CMO services, do not worry. The youth will uh, receive a temporary Medicaid number. It's called a 3560. That number will allow all of these services to be paid through Medicaid at no cost to the family. When we transition, which is a positive, when the CMO transitions out of the child family team that we help to create, the youth's temporary Medicaid number will go away. So earlier when I had mentioned, our main goal is to link with community-based sustainable resources. Sustainability is key. I'm not gonna link a family with a Medicaid resource when they don't have Medicaid. I'm gonna help the family as the care manager link with whatever their current insurance can cover or whatever their current financial ability is, if that makes sense. The last thing we want to do is link a family with a fantastic resource or an outpatient therapy, and then they can't continue it because we're just setting people up for failure. But to answer the question, it doesn't matter what the private insurance is that you have. The youth will be given a temporary 3560 Medicaid number because most private insurance does not cover this level of care. But the state of New Jersey wanted to make sure that these services were accessible to any youth, young adult, up to 21 in the state of New Jersey struggling with behavioral, mental health, developmental disabilities, and or substance use challenges at no cost to the family. Next question. I love this game. It's my favorite. Okay. <laughs> um, we've had two separate CMOs from two counties. Both have told us they have to phase out at 90 days. We have verbally told them we refuse that. I'm going to channel some of my... Um, strengths-based approaches here on this one. I'm, I'm like going triggered to, now. I'm, I'm, triggered. I'm so triggered right now. Um, first of all, I am very sorry that that was your yeah. experience. Second of all, on behalf of all of the CMOs, that is not the message that we want to deliver. Now, don't get me wrong. There have been situations where a child and a family are in fact clinically ready for transition. Now, let me dig a little bit deeper because it's important that we're all on the same page here. Perform care and CMO is never looking for perfect. What we're looking for is stability and safety. The main reason why our services get open in the first place is because there's an active crisis of some sorts. The child and the family are not safe and stable enough at that point to access community-based outpatient mental health services. Our job is to help the family navigate these services that are paid for and available through the state and then help them to reach that level of stability. So if every situation is unique and different, so I'll, I'll, you know, I'll give the other CMOs a little bit of the benefit of the doubt. However, that messaging and delivery of that message should have been a lot more clear. And I'm very sorry. And like my heart hurts a little bit that that was your experience. So if you feel comfortable, Lisa is going to give you my direct email address in the chat box. If you would like to reach out, I am happy to okay. bring this to other folks. So yeah, we can so the address these was, challenges. Yeah. yeah so the follow-up was, does daily self-injury and PIKE count as safe? Um, no, that's, no, I wouldn't say that's not safe. I'm going to include my email address. Yeah. <laughs> Lisa, Lisa Delp is one of our fantastic supervisors at the Camden CMO. Um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit speechless at the moment. Look, if there's one thing I've learned being in this field for over 10 years is that our system in New Jersey is great, but it is not perfect. 
there is always room for improvement. So every time we do presentations like this or have an opportunity, I've been down to the FSO to have conversations with parents directly. It's, it's difficult to hear, but it's important for us to hear the reality of what families are experiencing. So folks like Lisa, myself, and Audrey can take it back and, and have meaningful conversation about how, how, do, we, how do we fix this? How do we do better? How do we help families more? Um, so thank you for your, you know, willingness to share, um, to share that. I'm sure that wasn't, that wasn't easy, but, you know, thank you. And uh, we'll definitely be following up. Please, please email Lisa and myself. Um, ah, that makes me so sad. Any, any other questions that we can, that we can address? Not right now. So we're caught up. All right, Audrey. So I don't have to do your slides for you. Do you want to share screen or do you want me just to? I can share screen. That's too, too it's cool. I hate having to go after April because she always does such a great job. <laughs> I, just, do you... I just hate it because she does such a good job all the time. And I'm a stumbly, bumbly fool. No, you're fantastic. Stop. It. Presenter mode. Okay. Can you guys see that? Yep. Okay, cool. Um, so I'm, there's the box in the way. I know the box sometimes gets in the no, way. No, I can't see the box. Yeah, We're cool. good. Perfect. Please, please. Thank you, April, for being awesome and wonderful all the time, always. And Lisa, for also being equally awesome and wonderful. And Amy, for just being, you guys are the super duper best. Um, so family support organization, just for those of you who don't know, I talk fast. I'm trying to slow it down. I'll do my best. <laughs> um, family support organization is, um, there's one in each county, just like April said. Um, it's one-to-one -one parent support for all families who are active with CMO. So um, 15 FSOs, 15 CMOs, any family who has a CMO, a care manager, is able to have support from a family support partner or an FSP. Every FSP um, has been through the system of care or another system with their own children. Many of us, several systems with our children, so it kind of makes us a peer-to-peer -peer support. Um, we aren't clinicians, we aren't doctors, we aren't therapists, we're just parents who've been through the ringer with our own kids, which is very empowering to another parent because a lot of times you feel like you're the only one out there and you feel alone and you feel isolated. Um, you know, it's hard to find support when your kid has extra stuff. So this is a chance for us to connect. There's so many more of us than you would ever imagine, um, but it's a really good chance for parents to connect with another parent and learn peer-to-peer -peer advocacy and peer-to-peer -peer support. We do other services we do offer other services to non-CMO families like support groups, parent education, workshops. Um, we have a slew of different things we can help parents with. We do things called warm lines where anybody can call at any time and just ask for support. It won't be as detailed and as in-depth as a CMO family, but you'll still get the support you need to help navigate whatever situation you have going on, including school, including placement, including anything you need, um, juvenile justice, whatever it might be, we're here to help. So we have parent partners, family support partners who, again, are parents who've been through the system. We have very extensive um, training on how to share your story and how to connect with parents, but also a lot of, a lot of, you know, workshop trainings, um, parent support trainings, parent education, parent, parent project, all the different things you can think of to help us empower parents and educate them. We do have nurtured heart approach trainings. Every, like I said, every FSO does it a little different. Bars in Camden County are online, in person, small group, after hours, um, you name it, we have it. So um, she even does, she even does, I think it's a, it's a <laughs> chat and chew late at night for parents who are really tired in both work. So she does a lot of really great different trainings. Um, support groups, we have a parent support group, grandparent support group, a caregiver, which is for anybody who's a part of the child's life, father support group, a women's empowerment group. Um, we have a special needs support group, which is my favorite because the parents get to go and hang out together and then the kids get to go and play by themselves. So it's kind of two birds, one stone, but everybody gets something fun for the day. We also have teen groups, youth partnership. Every FSO has a youth partnership, which I said is 13 to 21 for um, peer to peer support for the youth to learn self-advocacy, empowerment, how to navigate being in a world that doesn't always that's not always your best friend. We also have youth leadership, which is where the youth who are in the youth partnership get to learn how to become leaders. You know, eventually we hope these people will be the leaders of tomorrow. Um, they learn how to do agendas and PowerPoints and presentations and just how to really harness the strengths they have in them to share and help others. 
We can help access services and resources at any point in time. We do many self-sustaining resource supports um, for food or housing or jobs, anything a family needs to be self-sustainable. Family support organization isn't just about the youth, it's about the family as a whole, because a lot of times you're going to find that the youth is having struggles or issues because of the family dynamics or the family's having issues because of the youth's dynamics. So to counterbalance that, we're here to support the whole family. Sometimes if a you know, a youth is getting CMO services and there's something pretty serious going on. There's other siblings in the house who who may need other support, too, because the attention split, things like that. So we do sibling support groups, um, lots of different things to help the kids manage. Accessing services, like I said, we we're, we have <laughs> ridiculous, ridiculous amounts of supports available and ways we can help families. Um, a lot of times it's just simply a link, I'm sending a link. Sometimes it's going with you. If you need help getting your electrical paid, we'll take you to OEO. You know, different things to help make sure your family is stable and happy. Advocacy, we do lots and lots of advocacy for school. I think that's the biggest thing we do is school <laughs> advocacy. Um, helping parents, like I said, learn the rights and regulations and rules that you as a parent have. Um, but teaching you long term, you know, it's not about getting you from point A to point B. It's it's teaching you how to have these resources and supports and advocacy for the remainder of your child's life because you're going to be with that child a lot longer than we are. And the stronger you can be, the better your child's life outcome will be. Um, resource referrals, we refer to plenty of different people, you know, food banks or clothing closets, different things like that to help. Um, again, anything a family needs, any kind of resource referrals. And we do a lot of workshops. Parent Project is a new one we've started. It's for kids who are 14 to 21 who have um, violent, aggressive behavior, you know, kids who sneak out, kids who text, kids who are in gangs, kids who have guns, kids who are sex trafficked, anything, those, those higher level behaviors and how to help the parents navigate that. We have a workshop called Loving Solutions, which is for kids under the age of 11 who just are starting to exhibit behavior that's not manageable. So um, really great opportunities for families to have free support you don't have to be involved in CMO. You don't have to be connected to perform care. You can just come to any of the events we have. We have every one of us has a Facebook page and it has the events on there. So you can feel free to reach out to any one of your FSOs and get information there. To gain act, any questions about that before I go on, because I'm going to go to a totally different topic. Good. Lisa, anything? Nope, nothing. Um, we're good. Okay. To gain access to IDD resources under the Children's System of Care, the youth has to be IDD eligible, which means um, dis developmentally disabled. So in intellectually or developmentally disabled. If the child's under 18, the application must be submitted through Perform Care. There's three ways to apply. There's an online portal on Perform Care's website, which is a lot easier than, <laughs> that's probably the easiest way in our opinion. We do several of them here. Um, it's a lot of making a portal, uploading documents and filling out forms. You can download an application, complete it, and mail it in. And you can call Perform Care at 877-652-7624 to ask an application to be mailed to you. The online portal, you can use, you can upload documents and do the online portal from your phone. It's not very difficult. It's a lot easier nowadays than it used to be. Um, but there are documents to upload, things like that. So once you complete your application, you'll get a notification of determination within probably 30 to 90 days. New Jersey Family Care and Medicaid coverage for ABA services. For those of you who have children on the autism spectrum, Applied Behavioral Analysis, or ABA, is a really great support for the families, the kids. Um, as of April 1st, 2020, New Jersey Family Care, New Jersey's publicly funded health insurance, included CHIP and Medicaid as coverers of ABA services for children birth to 21 years old with autism spectrum disorder. You can visit the Autism New Jersey's website for more information on New Jersey Family Care, Medicaid coverage of ABA services, there's the link. And that's something that's a really big help for a lot of different families. So if you have private insurance, you can use private insurance. If you if you have Medicaid or CHIP, you can also use that. What to expect once DD eligibility is approved. So um, if I can go back a little bit for the application. The application, one of the biggest things we tell parents, the hugest, biggest, most important things we tell parents is to make sure when you do, the, it's a section of, um, the CABS is called a child assessment of, is it, Lisa, what is it? The CAB stands for, I forget what it stands for. The CAB stands for beha oh, child adaptive, adaptive behavior, behavior skills. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. It's right on my brain. So the CABS is, is, a, is a tricky a tricky beast because the questions are very broad. It's very, very broad. So if you're going to fill this out, I would suggest 
have someone with you <laughs> um, because it says things like, can the child tie their shoes? That's the biggest um, struggle we come across when kids don't get approved because it says, can your child tie his shoes? And you think, oh, sure, Tommy can tie his shoes. But there's so many steps and so many tasks in tying your shoes that maybe Tommy can get the shoes on, but can he find the shoe, put the shoe on the right foot, crisscross applesauce, make sure it's tight. So brushing your teeth, um, combing your hair, getting dressed, there are all so many little steps that as a broad picture, yeah, maybe the kid could do that. But in the to really be able to be 100% independent and functional, that's the biggest thing we do with our families when we do DD applications is breaking down the tasks for each single question because again if you can complete two out of five tasks are you really able to do that independently not really so it gives you a good opportunity to really break down where your child's needs are and the strengths that they have so what to expect once you have eligibility is approved a family's care manager will reach out to you well, sorry the family's care manager will review the with the child family team and home services such as iih clinical or iih behavioral services and applied behavioral analysis Clinical is more um, uh, um, self-care, more, you know, hygiene, things like that, more, more self-services. So like self-care, um, behavioral obviously is behavior. And ABA is for the autism behavior, the applied behavioral analysis. Um, CMO walks the family through their options related to CSOC approved perform care resources. All services are based on clinical need, which is determined by perform care, not CMO. So CMO doesn't get to tell you Perform care tells you CMO just helps you navigate the providers and the services. If and when IIC, IIH, ISS, and or BA services are not enough, your care manager will help review the options for out of home treatment. Care manager assists the family with the documentation required by Perform Care for clinical review and approval of out of home services if or when appropriate. It's always the goal to keep the youth at home in their school, their community, with their family. Um, that's always what we aim for, but sometimes, you know, extra needs can be met in other places. What type of family supports are, what, I can't even see there's a bar in my, hold on. What types of IDD family support services are available? Educational advocacy, support provided to IDD eligible families and youth and their families when youth necessities in depth, youth necessitates in-depth help with educational related needs. This is a, a step beyond what we do. This is more like a professional advocate. Um, at the FSO, we give you, we're, we're trained, but not as trained as those through IDD, um, but it's a really good place to go if you're stuck and you have a lot of school issues where you can't get the support from um, your FSO or your CMO. Assistance with the cost of summer camp, uh, Perform Care pays for two weeks, I believe it's two weeks currently, two weeks of summer camp um, for youth who have IDD, and those are really great camps that help work on self-help skills, socialization, anything that your youth might need to be successful. It's also a great opportunity for them to meet other kids and have fun with other friends. Respite care is a huge, wonderful service for all families who have IDD eligibility. Respite is intended to provide temporary relief for the primary caregiver from the demands of caring for an individual with disabilities during times when the caregiver would normally be available to provide care. Example, going food shopping, going on date night, taking your other child to a, a family dinner without, you know, taking your, your other children out by themselves, um, getting your hair cut, something that is when you're not working, when you're not, you know, doing something, when it's a time when you'll be home with your child that gives you your time back so that you can regenerate and and reinvigorate yourself to return back. So it's, as a parent who has an IDD child, it's a lot, it's a lot and can be very overwhelming. So respite is a great resource for people to have access to. Um, they do also have, sometimes there's overnight or weekend respite. So there's plenty of different opportunities for that. Assistive technology, assistive device means that an idle piece of equipment or product system, product system, whether acquired commercially, modified, or customized, that is to be used to increase, maintain, and improve functional capabilities of youth. It can't be solely therapeutic. So would that be a talker or, um, you know, sometimes a scribe or dragon software, different things like that, that the youth can access for basically to communicate, um, to communicate and have the best opportunities at life they can. Respite care, there are one, two, three, four, five different kinds of respite care. Agency hired respite is a service provided to families who want a respite worker who is recruited, trained, and employed by a qualified agency to provide social and recreational experiences to children in or out of their homes. So that would be, you would hire someone who's from an agency that has been vetted, cleared, 
approved, trained to work with children with special needs. Self-hired respite is a service provided to families who want to recruit their respite worker of choice. The family pays the worker directly and sends the paperwork in for support or reimbursement to the provider agency on a monthly basis. This could be your mom, your neighbor, your niece, someone who the youth is familiar with, that you're comfortable with, who can come in and provide that break for you. Agency after-school care provided by community-based agencies. After-school care programs have individual criteria, including specific age and supervision needs, and are close to the child's residence. After-school care is provided at an agency site and not in the child's home. Um, agency weekend recreation. Weekend recreation provides social and recreational experiences for children outside of their homes, sometimes including a community outing component. Friday evening through Sunday, it is the caregiver's responsibility to provide transportation, but these have been so wonderful for kids who don't always get to go away. Um, we've had kids go to museums, we've had kids go to plays, we've had kids go to baseball games. So it's a really good opportunity for that kid to get special one-on-one -on -one attention and give your family a chance to have your own time to, to re re and reinvigorate yourselves. Overnight respite allows your child to stay overnight in a safe, short-term alternative living arrangement. Each youth may attend up to six days on a rolling 365 period based on availability. Services must be provided in a licensed facility with round-the-clock supervision and care. This is great if you know you have a baby, come a new baby coming, or there's some kind of emergency in your family. Um, a really good option for you to have that longer term. Some people have gone on vacation, you know, and they aren't able to take their their IDD family members. So this is like another opportunity for the family to have a vacation and the youth to have a vacation. <clears throat> eligibility for IDD service, family support services. In order to be eligible for family support services or FSS, there's a lot of acronyms. I apologize, there's a lot of acronyms. Um, the child must be determined eligible for IDD services through the children's system of care, which means they're eligible for functional services before applying for family support services. Family support services is different than family support organization. Family support services is, is a kind of a manager to help you navigate the systems and supports available for IDD families. Family support organization is for everybody. Um, the child must live in the community either with a family member or an uncompensated caregiver to have family support services and all of the benefits for which the individual may be eligible, such as social security, private insurance, insurance must be accessed before accessing family support services. Family support services are not entitled or guaranteed, and the ability to provide services to your child is contingent upon the availability of children's system of care resources. How to apply and request IDD family support services. So a telephone application, which is about 20 minutes to complete, can be can it's easy because you just give them a call, it takes 20 minutes, they do a lot of intake things, regular basic intake at a new, like a new doctor. Um, can be found toll free right here, a regular performed care number. You would just call and ask for to speak to a family support service worker and they'll help you navigate that. Um, performed care is available 24 7, 365 all the time. So you can call literally anytime. We've had families who were just on a Saturday night just burnt and they couldn't handle it anymore. And they ended up calling family support services to get support and resources for the following, you know, for the next set of time because they just, they were burnt and they didn't have a chance. That's when they had the time to call. Only the parent or legal guardian can apply for family support services. So it can't be, it can't be your case manager, it can't be your family support worker. It has to be, it has to be the parent or legal guardian. So example, if your mom has custody of your child, then your mom can call. If you don't have custody, you can't call. Uh, perform care evaluates for family support services based on individual need, caregiver need, current services utilized and available, and the availability of resources. So that means it's not always guaranteed, but you know, if you have a need, it certainly cannot help. Like April, April said, when in doubt reach out. You can't hurt to ask and to see what's going on. See if you can get some extra support for your family. Applying for determination of eligibility for people with IDD who are 18 years or older. This is the key. This is one of the big things that we, we come across now, especially when, you know, kids since COVID and the school transition changes. Um, if a person's 18 years or older, applications must be submitted to the Department of Human Services, DHS, Division of Developmental Disabilities. CSOC, so if you, you have to apply, I would say on your child's 18th birthday, you apply to DVD. You apply, there's a link in our, in our um, handout, there's a link that gives you all the information and the links to apply. Um, CSOC will honor determinations of eligibility and provide services made by DDD for people between the ages of 18 to 21. It's a little confusing because you have to apply to DDD to get DD services. Um, but anything, any determination, if your child's determined eligible, they will receive services through CSOC until they're 21 years old. 
Eligibility for services from CSOC ends the day before the individual's 21st birthday. So it's very important to make sure you get that application into DDD as close as possible to their 21st birthday. Um, you can visit DDD for more information on the application forms and process. There's the link there. And in the handout that you guys are going to get, it goes through, um, you know, at, by the 18th, at right of the day of your child's 18th birthday, these are the steps you can follow if you've never had performed care or if you've had performed care in the past. If you've had performed care in the past and your child's turning 18, there's a short form. It's much quicker and faster than the regular DD application. Um, but that's also, it's all linked in the handout you guys will get at the end of the presentation. I also dropped it in the chat box. Thank you. And this is you, babes. You want to do this one since this is- I sure resource, do. Resource <laughs> that is the bomb. It's the best thing in the whole entire world ever. <laughs> I just uh, actually dropped the New Jersey resource net brochure in both English and Spanish in the chat box. Um, so ResourceNet is a free web directory of program support services and events for families specific to the county in which they live. So the little image I gave you there on the right hand side is all of the county's CMOs and the direct uh, information for their resource net. The link I provided in the chat is the New Jersey resource net link for the entire state of New Jersey. So when you go to that link, it will open up a map of New Jersey. You simply hover your mouse over the county in which you're searching for resources. When you click that county, it will specifically open you up to that county's resource net. Many of us, uh, like Camden is close to Burlington or you have you know, Essex and Hudson up north, we share a lot of the same resources, but each resource net is specific to that particular county. So if you've never, you know, been on a resource net, I highly encourage you to check it out. Um, let the schools know, anybody who might be on the call today that works at a local school, great resources are on the resource net. It is mobile friendly. It can be translated into different languages. It can be printed and shared through social media. Um, each of the CMOs manage their own county's database. Uh, the unique aspect of the resource net is nobody is putting the information in aside from the person who works at that agency. So for example, if Lisa Delp owns her own outpatient therapy office, I have a conversation with her. I think what she's doing is great. I tell her, hey, this is the link, click it follow the steps, make a page for your agency. She goes in and makes the page for her own agency and then she keeps it updated. It's free marketing for her, but it's a way for us to centralize all of the locations within any one community. The sites are only as good as the community that is feeding into the process. Camden has had our resource net for a few years now, so it's it's progressively growing, but like I said, there's always room for improvement. But, you know, if you're ever looking for anything, and it doesn't just have to be mental health for children, it could be resources for adults. It could be, hey, where's the local karate studio? Or I'm Buddhist and I just moved to this county. Is there a Buddhist church or temple that I can go to? Like we will accept and approve any community-based valuable resource that helps our families thrive and grow. Um, again, I can only speak for Camden because I manage that site, but it is my understanding that all of us across the state are, you know, working towards the same goal, having a central spot for anybody in the community, whether it's a parent of a child uh, with special needs or behavioral challenges, or if it's just a professional who's looking to connect with what exists in their county and their community. Um, so please check out that site. If you have any questions, you can always email me. I'm happy to, you know, send you a how-to video. I created one that kind of walks you through how to utilize the site. I'm happy to share that with anyone who's interested. We do have some questions, April. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to go from the bottom up. How sure. long does it take on average from submission to live on the site? Great question. So I, again, I can only speak for the county in which I manage. I, you know, at most seven days, I try to check the special inbox for submissions at least two times a week. Uh, like for example, this week I'm spending every waking moment doing this conference with Amy and the rest of the planning team. So I might be a little bit behind on any Camden submissions, but all of the community resource directors at each of the CMOs, we do try to make sure that we're staying on top of it and checking that inbox. You will get an email when your county's resource net 
reviews and approves your listing, just so you know. You'll get a special email that says, thank you for joining the blah, blah, blah resource net. Here's your login and credential. And then usually we'll provide you with feedback. Hey, the logo you uploaded is a little bit blurry. Or, hey, we noticed that you didn't do a hyperlink to your Facebook or your Instagram or your website. Would you like to do that? Um, so we do try to keep open lines of communication. When in doubt, if you made a submission and it's like crickets and then you go to search yourself and you, you don't come up on that county's resource net, just reach out. There's an email address on every resource net listing uh, for how to get in touch with, you know, the, the administrative team that that helps to run that particular county site. Great. Thanks. And um, also a thanks for the addition of the virtual event being live on all counties. Great addition. Um, one more question was, do you call Perform Care to check on the status of your IDD application? I'm going to let Audrey take this one. The scotch your name all over it, Mama. <laughs> so yes, you can call Perform Care. Um, you also can have whoever is part of your team. If you have an FSO or if you have a CMO, we can check too. Um, I I personally feel like you call every day, all day till it's done. But it's just me. Um, the more you can, you know, they do the best they can. They get a lot. So the more you can, the better. Just it's really important to remember that there's like. Um, new updated updated requirements where you have to have an evaluation with this much time and blah, blah. So it's really, really, really important if you're going to fill out an application and you're not really skilled at all these things, have someone go through it with you um, because you have to have evaluations within so many years and they have to be this specific evaluation and things like that. It can be very daunting. Even as a provider, when I did my son's application, I was overwhelmed. So I know it's it just can be very daunting. So once you get it in, I would say give it a two weeks. And then I would say just give a call, see how it's going. And then just call. We tell parents, call every week. <laughs> call every week until you get an answer. Because, you know, the, the what did they say? The early bird gets, whatever, the, the one who pokes, <laughs> the bear pokes, the you know, the thing. Um, yeah. But yeah, so like I would say call as much as you can because, once a week, we just say call once a week and we check. We can check on our end too. FSO or CMO can check on our end. It's also really helpful because sometimes if there's additional information needed, sometimes you forgot something or it's not, if something's outdated or it doesn't have the right evaluation in it, we can see on our end as well. So if you say, hey, can you just check up for me? We can tell you, oh, mail, email this to the, per you know, put this on the portal so that you can have updated stuff before you even get a letter from Perform Care. So it helps to ask your care manager, helps to ask your family support partner, it helps to call Perform Care. You know, the the more you advocate and the more you you follow up, the better you're going to become at advocacy later on. So, yes, absolutely. Excellent. I also wanted to, you know, note, uh, Audrey, you can go to the next slide. When I started this presentation, I failed to specify that the parent or legal guardian has to be on the call mm -hmm. when you reach out to perform perform care to initiate services. That doesn't mean that an FSO parent partner or a friend or a school guidance counselor can, can't can support a family or legal guardian in making that call. It just means that you cannot call on behalf of a child and family. I have heard that there have been situations where a family had more than one person on the call and the person who answered said, please call me back You know when you're by yourself always just ask to speak to a supervisor. That is inaccurate information. And we want to make sure that everybody understands crystal clear. Any parent or legal guardian who's calling Perform Care can have a hundred people on the line if they, if they need to. That is actually one of the 10 principles of wraparound. That's one of the things that we encourage families to do is to strengthen their natural supports. Um, and we know that schools are very eager to help where they can. So if a guidance counselor, a principal, a pastor at a church, a next door neighbor, your aunt, your cousin, whoever wants to help you make that call because it's difficult or it's challenging for you, that is more than okay. And if anybody tells you different, just simply ask to speak to a supervisor. Um, but the parent or legal guardian has to be present on the call. And unfortunately, other people cannot call on behalf of a family. Um, I know in Camden, if if a school person reaches out with concerns and a parent is maybe hesitant, that the team over at the Family Support Organization in Camden will, you know, help to have a conversation with the family. Oftentimes we get confused with DCPMP. We understand yeah. <laughs> it, it's it's complicated, it's it's difficult, uh, but we always want to make sure that people understand that the CMO services 
um, are voluntary. We're simply here to help at any point in time in the process. A family can say, this is too much. No, thank you. We give them our phone number. No questions asked. No judgment. You call us whenever you're ready. We're here to help as many times as needed up until the child's 21st birthday. And like, yeah. can I piggyback off that to, yeah. to piggyback? So FSO is different too. So let's just say like April said, which is so perfectly the way you said it is if a child's five and they're having behavior issues and then they get a little bit older and something comes up and they come back in the system. Same thing with us. Like we never, we never close or we never transition. You know, we, we are always here. <laughs> so we, we are always here. So anytime, if you have an FSO, I would say just reach back out to them. If you have a question where it just might just be a simple question, how do I navigate this? Or what do I do here? Or, you know, I don't know what to do. Help me. I'm lost. We oftentimes will say, that's a quick, easy peasy fix. You know what to do. Let's get it on track and get it moving forward. Sometimes we'll say you have to call perform care and get reopened, but it's always, we're always, always here. Family support organization we're run by families for families. So anytime anything ever comes your way, you just pick up the phone and give a call and, and we're more than happy. And even just sometimes you just need to know, hey, I just, I'm having a bad time with my son. I need to just get out and go to support group. Guess what? Yeah. We got a hundred of them. So come on over. So always, always, always reach out and just, you know, we don't like it. Like we don't close. So 24 <laughs> 7, 365 for the rest of we, your kids' life. <laughs> we could probably keep this conversation going for another 30 hours, uh, but it is 7.03. So we want to wrap this up. We want to thank you all for listening to us and, you know, enjoying in this uh, robust conversation. But we have some giveaways. Ooh. What's going on, guys? We do. Lisa, if you wouldn't mind um, doing your the exit. I'll start. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. This uh, concludes this very informative uh, workshop from um, NJ Department of Children and Families, the Children's System of Care Eligibility and Functional uh, Services offered. And we want to give a huge thank you to April and Audrey for all their help and resources and knowledge. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so we are going to go into the trivia question, right, Amy? Yes. 